So, uh, uh, today I will keep the continuation of the seven point of the mind training. And uh, as last time, so I was talking about the commitments of the mind training. So they are 18 commitments of the mind training. It's uh, <clears throat> for it's very important to keep this commitment when you are practicing the mind training. Once if you not keep the commitments, so you cannot practice and uh, you cannot transform the yourself. So, so now he, today we're here at the sixth, sixth commitment. So in the text, as you can see, the sixth the commitment is the abandon any expectation of result. So that means that we should not expect the any result. So that's why it's saying the abandon any expectation of the result. So it's a very important commitments that the, always you have to remind yourself that you should not expect the, any result. Don't expect the, any result. So normally in the day-to-day -day life, we expect a lot. We expect especially the result really a lot. Uh, for the example, for the example, so when you are doing the something, whatever the you are, whatever the you are doing, whatever the you are doing the walk or the whatever, definitely we will not focus on the present what we are doing. We will just expect the result. Yeah, I always used to say the one thing that when you tell someone that you love him or her, what you will expect, you will expect back saying the same thing. So you are expecting. So that's why here it's saying that the don't expect the result. Don't expect the result and the what you are doing, do it rightly. Whatever you are doing, you, you have to do it rightly and that don't expect any results. So that's a very important for the, that in your mind that you have to keep on that all the time. You have to keep in the, all the time that, that you should not expect the results. Just focus on the what you are doing, just focus it. When you are doing the right thing, you will get the right results. When you are doing the good thing, you will get the good result. That is a one natural law. So that's we call the law of the karma. When you see, when you plant the apple seed, apple tree will grow. When you plant the orange tree, orange tree will grow. That is the karma or that is a law of the nature. So karma means the law of the nature. So that is a law of the nature. So that's why you don't have to expect the result. Just what you are doing, do it rightly. Now you can see the seven, the seventh i think the uh, seventh the commitment so you you can see it's a give up the poisonous food give up the poisonous food it looks like a little bit like an idiom idioms uh, give up the poisonous food give up the poisonous food means that the, we avoid to eat the poison food poisonous food which is not good for the health the same thing, the, it's saying that the poisonous foods is of all these negative thoughts. These are we are the poisonous food, poisonous food. So mind, when you become the mentally healthy, you have to avoid the lots of negative thoughts. You have to give up these negative thoughts, destructive emotions. These are the like a poisonous food. It will destroy your mental state. So that's why it's saying the poisonous food. Give up the poisonous food means give up the oldest negative thoughts. So as I mentioned a few times that the mind is like a garden. 
mind is like a garden and uh, if you plant a good seed we'll have a good garden if you don't plant anything something will be grow that will be the weeds so that's why the mind is like a garden so that's why what we have to do is we have to plant the more positive thoughts when you plant more negative thoughts then mind will become a very i mean the very disturbed so that's why he's saying that giving give up the poisonous food so not to think of the not to have the negative thoughts so now the here the one thing that we should know that the sometimes we feel that the, we cannot we cannot stop the thinking the negatives but the, in the reality we can but the first step is the not to stopping the stop not to stopping the negative thoughts first step is of reducing the negative thoughts first step the reducing the negative thought is that you what you have to do is that you have to try to think the more the positive things more the positive thing more positive sides when you think the positive thought side once then it will easier to think again when you think the positive side again and again more what happens is that the, then the, it will become the, your habit so it just become the, your habit so you can see that uh, some of the optimistic people always sees the positives because they are not born as the optimists they start to think the one more positive side then slowly they will see the more and more positive things in their life so that's why they are saying that the, some people sees difficulties in opportunities some people sees the difficulties in opportunity but some people sees opportunity in difficulties so now it's up to you whether we see the difficulty in the opportunities or opportunity in the difficulties that's up to us so mind turning practice trying to teach us that the how to see the opportunities in the difficulties when you see the opportunities in the difficulties you will see the difficulty as a, not a problem at all so even the some people they will see the difficulties the opportunities and they don't see the opportunity is the as the opportunity they will see the opportunity is the disguise of the difficulties we have to see the difficulty is the disguise of the opportunity so that's why here is saying the give up the poisonous food give up the old negative thoughts now you can see that the now you the third, uh, eight the commitment say that don't be so loyal to the cause don't be the so loyal to the cause it means that the, whenever the negative thought whenever the destructive emotion arises apply the antidotes apply the antidotes means that when you generate the anger you have to apply the antidote to the anger that means trying to control your anger that every people will tell that i i'm sure that you have heard a lot of things like this whenever you generate the anger they will try to breathe in or out or to control the anger or that is a very common but the here the most important thing is when i what will i tell you that the, whenever you feel sad control the sadness apply the antidote to the sadness that's the most important day to day life if you look at that in the this week this week or the last week in the last week just look at the last week and the, how many minutes or how many hours you have feel stress or unhappy or anxiety just one week just look at the last week how many minutes just last week and the, if you feel anxiety unhappy stress for that one hour in the last week you really wasted a lot of the your precious time in your life just being the unhappy so there is a saying that i really like they saying that the, when you waste the time when you waste the time as being enjoying 
when you wasted the time as being enjoying, that time is not wasted at all. When you waste some time as being happy or being enjoying, that it is not wasted at all. So same thing like that. When you wasted the time being unhappy, it's really one of the worst thing in our life. So that's why what I'm saying is that here, just look at the one week back, just last week, how many minutes, how many hours, or how many hours that you have spent as being unhappy or stress or anxiety. Just this is your homework, okay? Just look at that. Sometimes you will see that some people in the morning when they have a the very bad morning, I think that they will spend the whole day as a very bad day. They will say, oh, you, he or she had a very bad day. Yeah, that's the having the bad day. And so nearly they have had the very eight hours or more than the eight hours being unhappy, being stressful. So that means uh, we have lost at the eight hours of the day. That is, a, that is the time. So in the very precious, because of the, we are, as we are born as a human, we have limited time, limited time to remain in this world. So that's why the, as much as the time, we have to have the very, I mean, the use it very rightly. So that's why here it's saying that the, don't be so loyal to the course, I mean, the, whenever you have generated the negative emotion, I mean, the destructive emotion like unhappiness or the sadness or the stress. What you have to do, you have to apply the antidote. You have to try to control it. You have to immediately try to come to overcome it. That's what you have to do. Normally, when you feel the unhappy or sad, what you will do, two things normally they will happen. So you will try to, mostly the mans, when they feel the unhappy, they will try to spend the time alone. For the female, they will try to talk with someone to take out the unhappy, their sadness. So if men, mostly when they are feeling the unhappy, they want to spend some time alone. They want to keep quiet. But this is, the, I'm not, this is the more like a biological response that the, how we are trying to overcome the, our, the unhappiness. That's a biological response, the difference between the male and the female. From the mind training practice, it's not saying that way. Just when you are feeling the unhappiness, you have to apply the antidote. When you are feeling the unhappiness, as I mentioned before, there are many ways how you can overcome that. First thing is you just search the unhappiness. Where does that exist? unhappiness the another thing is that just accept oh the, when you feel unhappy or sad just accept it yeah there is a issue there is a problem not only me you have to think that all the sentient beings having that problems all the sentient beings all the humans have the unhappiness and problem the second thing you have to think that you are not alone third thing distract your mind meditate when you are feeling that, inhale the exhale the breath. Just focus on your breath, not to think. When you are th when you are feeling the unhappy, that means that you are thinking for something again and again. That issue, that again and again, that issue which disturbs you most, which you are disturbed you, and that's why that you are feeling the very unhappy with that issue which makes you the unhappy. So that's why the what you have to do is that the, you have to think. Uh, uh, think or you are the focus on your breath, not to, not to think about that the issue which makes you the unhappy. Okay, so that is the eighth point. You're saying that don't be so loyal to the cause. Now the tenth commitment, sorry, the ninth commitment. You can see that don't lash out in retaliation. Don't la lash out in the retaliation. That means that it looks like a more like a really the idioms. So here it's saying that what does that mean is that when someone accuses you, when someone criticizes you, don't criticize us back. So that's a very important point. Most of the argument in our life, it happens when someone accuses or someone criticizes you, immediately you will criticize us back. So that's why the first, all the big argument starts from the small arguing to each other. So someone criticizes you, someone talks, so what you have to do is that you <clears throat> don't have to criticize this back. So you have to remain a cow. So now you will think how it's possible. 
Let me tell you the one story. So that's a very long back in the monastery, very long back. I think it's maybe 15, <clears throat> more than 15 or 16 years back. So it was in the South India, the monastery. One small kid, he was not studying the properly. So I asked him to come to the, my room. He came and uh, I just scolded him, the small kid. I scolded him and I told him that why you are not studying well. Then I scolded him. I use a quite harsh word. And uh, I told him that you are very stupid. You are not studying well. So quite harsh word I used toward him. After the three minutes later, using the harsh word, I asked the small kid, did you get angry? The small kid told me that no, he didn't get angry. So I was a bit surprised and asked him that I use a very harsh word towards you. Why you didn't get angry? He told me the very interesting thing is he told me that he was not paying the attention to the what I'm saying. He was thinking about the cricket game. He was <laughs> that is the that is the point. That's really it's give out the big passage that when someone criticizes you, you don't have to focus on the, that harsh word. Some in the family, they might use the sometimes a little bit harsh word towards you. You don't have to focus on that word. You can just smile or the, you can just smile or the rib calm. So that's why it's saying that don't lash out in the retaliation. Means that the, when someone criticizes you, someone criticizes you, don't criticize them back. So it is something mainly he talks in the day-to-day -day life, okay? In the workplace, someone really accusing and the criticizing. When you accuse of something, then you can explain the back, explaining back. Someone accuse you, it doesn't mean that you have to accuse back. You can explain the things. But especially in the family, the small small matter, a lot of things happens in the family. In the that some in the family member, they might criticize or they might tell you the wrong side or negative sides of, or negative things about you. But you don't have to criticize back. You have to remain the calm. Okay. So here it's saying that don't lash out the in the retaliation. Now, now you what you have to do is that in now someone criticizes you. You don't have to, you don't, you should not criticize back, okay? You have to just remain the calm. That is a little bit tough. When you practice, then I'm sure you can learn it very well. In the Buddha's lifetime, one person criticized the Buddha's lot. Not only he criticized, he just split on the Buddha's face, but the Buddha was remaining calm and he was smiling. When the Buddha uh, split on the Buddha's face, he, the Buddha was just smiling. So that person could not believe that. So once he went back, once he back, he could not sleep that night. Because he was thinking that how can the Buddha remain so calm and smiling? Even not only he criticized, he split on the Buddha's face. So that next morning he came back to the Buddha's and the, told the Buddha that really he was so sorry. He wanted to ask the apology because he was so sorry that what he did. He split on the Buddha's face and accusing and the criticizing the Lord to the Buddha. And the Buddha told the one thing, you should go and ask the forgiveness from the Ananda. Ananda was the Buddha's cousin and the, his assistant and ask from the Ananda. Because the, if you ask the forgiveness and the, uh, forgiveness, he will feel more happy. Because the first thing is that when you split on me, I never generate the anger towards you. But Ananda, he generated the anger. He wanted to re retaliate, retali uh, retaliate back to you. Now, if you go and ask the forgiveness, he will feel happy. He will enjoy. It. But for me, it's very fine. When you split on me, I'll remain as calm. Still, when you ask me the forgiveness, I'm still remain as calm. So that is the one thing that uh, in our life that we have to learn from that in the family, someone accuses you, someone criticizes you, you have to remain the calm. Because that is a, something that when you remain the calm is then slowly, it is like a contagious disease. When you keep can calm and the, remain as a calm in the home, then it can affect the, your rest of the family members. When you go on the criticizing, then the slowly the, your rest of the, your family member learn that to, to criticizing each other. When you remain the calm, peace, when even they are the criticizing, when you learn to remain the calm, that will also help the other to remain the calm. It is like a contagious disease. <laughs> okay.
thank you so much thank you and we'll stop here okay thank you so much thank you thank you thank you thank you